What if I told you that there's a type of steroid in certain plants that'll get you absolutely jacked, such that the scientists at Freie Universität Berlin is actually trying to ban it, they're urging Wilder to ban it because they actually think it's too powerful. So what is actually going on? My name's Shay, I'm a nutritionist and an international level athlete, and after the best jump of my life, where I was absolutely loaded out on spinach and quinoa, which contained this compound, I got drug tested. And what do you think happened? Well, to be honest, I was more worried about contamination in the untested pre-workout, but as far as ectosterone, it was fine. Like, it was clean, right? Because it's not banned yet. In this video, I'll explain some of the modern research and practicality for ectosterone and terkesterone. If they're worth using, can you get them in food? And my thoughts on supplementing them. So let's carry on. Yeah, for those of you that don't know about like drug testing protocols, they actually have to see the urine sample come out which it's a little weird at first like one of the other times I got drug tested I was really struggling and taking a while and <laughs> the guy's like oh do you want to take a break it's getting a bit awkward and it's like dude do you not think it's not awkward for me it's been like five minutes me trying to force this out and you're in the corner just like oh uh, yeah how's it going how's it going over there so anyway as i said it's not banned yet but if we pull up the world anti-doping agency or the water monitoring program you'll see that it's in french okay here we go so the monitoring program is just the watch list of things that aren't banned yet but they're you know maybe giving more thought and as you'll see down here um, as far as stimulants go, caffeine's actually on here, which is crazy, because I don't think that's ever going to get banned. And anabolic agents, this is in and out of competition, they're thinking ectosterone. I think terkesterone used to be on here as well, for whatever re reason it's no longer here. Although terkesterone is under the bracket of ectosteroids, so perhaps that's falling under that bracket. So a bit more about how ectosterone works. So basically it's a plant hormone, but if we eat it, it actually stimulates or agonizes our beta estrogen receptor, which is responsible for protein synthesis. And as you could imagine, this is pretty strong as far as trying to make progress and trying to build muscle and strength. So my main point here is it's not like it's some crazy potent androgen like people injecting, you know, exogenous testosterone or some of the analogs like nandrolone. Because these come with the actual downsides. I think ectosterone is pretty safe. Like as far as androgens go, you're running into balding, liver damage, cardiovascular disease, depression, infertility. Like, you get the point. Trunk testicles, anxiety, hormonal imbalance, insomnia. Like, so unfortunately a lot of the research basing is with animal studies and although these can, you know, suggest some reasoning for human efficacy, um, it's not really something you can rely on. So I was looking through so many references in like meta-analyses about ectosteroids and, you know, there's a lot of rats here. This one's about rat soleus muscle. I mean, maybe they mean gym rat. That could be interesting, but they don't train calves. If you're enjoying this video so far, please be sure to drop a like and consider subscribing. It's free and I'd love to have you on board. So if we go back to the Berlin study I talked about before, you know, the... the Freie Universität the, Berlin. That one. <laughs> so in the study, they split up participants into four groups, they, the, you know, that control the placebo, and then the two main ones, which are 200 milligrams ectosterone and 800. And these numbers will become relevant shortly. So basically, they did find pretty strong performance-enhancing effects in both the 200 and the 800 in what they call a dose-dependent response, meaning that essentially more the better, which kind of can suggest like, you know, where does this end? Like, where's the limit of how much is actually going to be effective, right? Can you just keep going? Like, and for how long, right? So let's get into why this might be relevant for you and me, I guess. Uh, so the, the general consensus is quinoa can contain, you know, any from where from 18 to 50 milligrams per 100 grams of dry quinoa which might be like a regular bowl of quinoa. So why does this matter? Okay, so if we go back to the 200 milligram of ectosterone group, we know that this works, it's proven. And additionally, this study group only had 12 participants. And if you know much about studies and statistics, you'll know that you need a very significant <laughs> amount of change to actually say that it works if the study group is really small. I won't explain everything here, but if, if you are interested, you can look up confidence intervals. But basically, if it's a massive study, it's a lot easier to detect like a very minor change and say, this definitely works. Okay, it's statistically significant. But the fact that they've actually proven this in 12 participants, okay, it's like this 200 milligram dose really works which means perhaps like at a really high powered study with a lot of participants, maybe they can even see benefits at 50 milligrams, okay? And again, we're lacking evidence here, but I really do think 
even like 100 milligrams of quinoa will help. You know, maybe in a smaller study, you can't detect this, but that doesn't mean it's not working, right? And even if it doesn't, like, I still believe quinoa is one of the best foods you can have. Spinach as well. Spinach has really only a fraction of ectosterone compared to quinoa, but both of these foods are so micronutrient dense. Um, if you've seen my superfood tier list, they're pretty high up. <laughs> so, so before we get into supplements, let's cover turkesterone quickly. Pretty much the same mechanism of action. Some people think it's more potent. Again, we really don't have much research, particularly with turkesterone. We have barely any research at all in human studies. Again, with ictisterone, there's at least a few human studies, but for turkesterone, it's all rats, okay? And most of the evidence now is people saying anecdotal results, which is basically like, oh, it works for me, right? And although this doesn't really count much for actual scientific reasoning, a lot of people were saying they're bursting through plateaus on it, which, you know, isn't to be discounted either. So, like, maybe it works. We really don't know. But as far as um, content in foods, it's really not in edible foods. It's in, like, a little plant, which is where they extract the actual ictisterone from it. <laughs> um, I looked into, like, can we actually grow this plant and maybe, like, dry it and mash it up and, you know, throw it in a blender or something. But apparently it's pretty hard to grow um, unless you live in Central Asia which is not me currently, unfortunately. <laughs> Maybe then I'd be like world champion, but yeah, we'll, one day. Now, as far as supplements go, I think this is where people get confused. Um, my stance on supplements, usually it's like, you if you can get it through the regular food, just eat the regular food, because that way you're actually getting energy as well, you know, out of your macronutrients and also the micronutrients, which I always want to prioritize. Of course, the supplements will allow you to have a higher dosage because as we know, at least with ictisterone, higher dosage might mean just more results outright. So if we go back to the Berlin thesis paper, they also said the results report that in the 67% of the analyzed supplements, the labeled content of ictisterone is highly inaccurate. And for some of them, the composition on the label is imprecise. And my thoughts on that is, you know, if you're paying a lot of money, because these supplements aren't that cheap, and, you know, if you, a lot of the time they said two-thirds, um, you're not actually getting what you're paying for. Are you sure you want to pay for that? Additionally, for me, who gets tested occasionally, um, I don't want to risk getting popped for something else, because these are reasonably new supplements. I don't know how tight the regulation is. And if they're manufactured in a lab that's doing other things like banned substances, you don't want to have cross-contamination, um, which is kind of where some of my worries come from. Usually with things that are more proven, like, you know, creatine, it's really easy to get things that are batch tested and you know for sure that you're not going to get contaminated with some other crazy stuff. And the biggest fear I have is like, maybe they're just taking out all the ectosterone and the turkestra and putting in some like anabolic illegal performance enhancers. That way you see the results and you buy more because you think it's turkestra I'm working, it's magic, but what do you know? It's like psalms. <laughs> so, so that worries me as well. And so altogether, I can't really tell you what to do. I would always recommend eat your spinach and your quinoa, just because regardless, they're fantastic foods. Um, as far as supplements go, if you're on the fence, I would say no to start with. I mean, I can't tell you to not do it entirely, but... Um, just with the lacking research and potentially regulation, I'd be a little bit skeptical. As always, you want to eat mostly whole foods, which you'll get with the spinach and the quinoa. As I said, these will give you a massive array of micronutrients, which you won't get if you're just having a trash diet and throwing in like a few pills of turk and ectosterone on top. So um, there's some food for thought. But anyway, that's been me. Again, please consider dropping a like and subscribing if you did enjoy this video. And if you did enjoy this, um, there's a superfood tier list I talked about before and then seed oils. I thought those are two pretty good videos you might enjoy. So I'll see you next time.